topic is a big one and I can't possibly cover it all in a little vlog like this. Uh, so please do revise other areas of this topic, um, which is nutrition. I'm going to break it down a little bit for you and talk through some of the main points that you need to know for your exam. First of all, good nutrition is linked with the healthy growth and development of your body. That is what it's defined as. So if you get a question about it in your exam, that's what it is. You need to eat well to maintain good health and fight infections. Nutrients then, what are nutrients? Nutrients are chemicals that are found in foods. So your main ones are protein, carbohydrates, fats, vitamins and minerals. You need to know why we need them all and possibly give some examples of foods that they're found in. We will go over those in a minute. A balanced diet. I talk about a balanced diet a lot. It's not just about eating foods from every food group. It's about eating a variety of foods in proportion. Portion wise, in a day you would aim to eat two portions of meat or meat alternatives, three portions of milk or dairy products, five portions of fruit and veg, However, that has changed recently and the government have now changed that to seven. Um, if you write five or seven in your exam, you're going to get the mark for it. Potatoes and starchy foods, you would need five to six portions a day. And very little fats and sugars, not even accounting to one portion. So very a very small amount of fats and sugars. Right, let's look at protein in more detail then. Protein are the building blocks for your body. It's the most important nutrient. We need it for growth and repair of our muscles and our cells. Uh, proteins come from animals and they come from plants. So they categorise as animal proteins and alternative proteins. There are two types. High biological value proteins, so HBV, come from your animal products. And low biological value, LBV, come from your plant products. Proteins are made up of amino acids and high biological value proteins contain lots of our essential amino acids. So the essential amino acids are the ones that our body really, really needs, um, which is why sometimes vegetarians have a few issues with this kind of thing because they only eat the proteins that are low in biological value from plant sources. Carbohydrates. You all know that we need them for energy, that is our main source of energy, that's what keeps us going throughout the day. Carbohydrates are broken down into two categories, you have starchy carbohydrates and sugars. Carbohydrates break down into simple sugars and complex carbohydrates are what help us maintain a stable blood sugar level. So if you're eating too many of the sugary carbohydrates that can affect the blood sugar levels in your body but it also gives you a burst of energy. Now the energy that you get from these sugary foods is stored in your muscles and if you don't use it and you don't work it off then it is stored as fat. So keep it to a minimum. Fats and oils. You should know that fats at room temperature are solid and oils at room temperature are liquid. Fats are also energy providers as are carbohydrates. The energy we get from fats is quick release, so we burn it off pretty quickly. Again, same as the sugars, if you don't use it, it is stored as fat on your body. Lots of people say that we shouldn't eat fats, and fats are really bad for us. Too much fat is, as I've just said, it stores as fat, and you know the problems and issues you get from being overweight and obese. But we do need some fats, because it provides us with warmth. You get an insulating layer below your skin, and that's what keeps us warm. Our bodies also need some fats for building cell membranes. So eating too much fat can lead to many different health effects, some of which are coronary heart disease, obesity, high cholesterol, bad breath and type 2 diabetes. Vitamins. Our bodies only need tiny amounts of vitamins, but they are vital to the functioning of our body. And you need to know the different types and you need to know what they're for. So the main ones we're going to look at are vitamin A, B, C and D. Vitamin A we need for visual purple. Now I've explained that before, that just means in dim light, when it gets a bit darker, 
your eyes adjust so you can see shapes and outlines. That is what's classed as visual purple, so we need vitamin A to help with that. Vitamin B is not just one vitamin, it's a group of vitamins. That's why you might have heard of B12. There are different B vitamins within the group. We need these vitamins to help release the energy from the carbohydrates that we eat, so they kind of work together. Vitamin C, you will know that's the most common vitamin people talk about from oranges. We need those to make connective tissue and hold cells together. That also helps absorb iron from foods as well, which I'll come on to. Vitamin D works with calcium and to give us strong bones and teeth. And you may have heard that vitamin D comes from the sun. It kind of comes from the sun. Our body produces vitamin D in contact with sunlight. So if we're in sunlight, it's our bodies that produce the vitamin. It doesn't actually come directly from the sun. Minerals. Minerals are found in lots of foods. And actually, there are only two main types of mineral that we might be lacking. And they are iron and calcium. We need iron to make red blood cells and as you know red blood cells carry oxygen around our bodies. Blood is the body's transport system. The red blood cells are what carry oxygen around our system and around our bodies which is essential. So we need to make sure that we are getting enough iron in our diets. If we have a lack of iron we develop a disease called anemia. Now you might have heard it, it's why your skin turns a little bit yellow you're not getting enough oxygen around your body and this is more common in teenage girls and women because of the monthly period cycles. Calcium is needed for strong bones and teeth, I just mentioned it, it works with vitamin D. It also helps the blood clot, so if you've got a cut it will help the blood clot and you're not just going to bleed out and bleed out. Children need lots of calcium because most of our bone mass is laid down before the age of 21 which is why you need lots and lots of calcium as you're growing up to help your bones grow stronger before you hit the age of 21. If you have a lack of calcium, you get something called osteoporosis, which is a brittle bone disease where your bones are very weak and they can shatter very easily. Water. 65% of our bodies is made up from water. Adults should aim to drink two and a half litres a day. That's because we need water for lots of the body processes. Water helps control our body temperatures. It helps grease our joints so they move more easily. It aids in digestion. So as I mentioned about fibre earlier, it collects the water and it bulks out the waste. So it helps remove the waste from our bodies and aids digestion. The last thing I'm gonna cover is fibre. Can also be known as roughage or non-soluble polysaccharides. So NSP for short, you've probably seen that. Fibre isn't absorbed by the body, so you can eat as much fibre as you want to and not put on weight. We need it to aid with digestion. We've just spoken about it. It passes through the body, it collects water, it bulks up our waste, it makes it soft, and it's easier to pass through our system. A lack of fibre can cause constipation, so make sure you're eating plenty of that on your diet. On the last point, fresh fruit and vegetables are very high in fibres. So that's another reason to eat your seven a day. What I want you to also look at on this topic, I know we've done our 10 points, but you need to cover special dietary requirements. That includes vegetarian diets, uh, medical diets, religious diets, and you need to look at other health related issues such as obesity. So make sure you are revising everything to do with nutrition. It is a massive topic.